Hey guys, what's up? Uh, back with another video. Uh, this time we're going to do my WWE Backlash 2018 Classic Pay-Per-View Review. So let's get this on the way, shall we? We kicked off the show with Seth freaking Rollins defending the Intercontinental Championship against the challenger, the former champion, The Miz. Uh, this was an awesome opener, really solid stuff, really awesome. Uh, really enjoyed this match, probably by a match of the night, but there again... Uh, spoiler alert, uh, there wasn't really much competition this, on this night. So, uh, yeah, very solid opener. Real love this opener with uh, Seth and Miz uh, and then Seth Rollins. Another great title defense. Uh, Seth Rollins knocking it out the park in 2018, and this was just a continuation of that. So Seth Rollins beat the Miz to retain the Intercontinental Championship. And uh, we move on to the next match. Pretty fun, pretty big thumbs up to the opener. Of this match, of this uh, of this uh, pay per view, then we have we kick then next match on the card we had Alexa Bliss try, trying to get her Raw Women's Title back from the current champion Nia Jax, who Nia Jax beat her at WrestleMania for, to become the champion. So this is like the rematch for the championship. Um, didn't really get much from this match. Like Alexa tried stuff, tried to, you know try to try to beat her, but. You know, Nia was too big or too powerful to overcome, and the uh, the um, it, it did feel weird that the heel was the smaller, you know, the smaller person, uh, but you know, was the underdog in this match. But it was what it was. I didn't really care too much about this match, and Nia Jax retained the championship. So we move on to the next match, which was Randy Orton versus Jeff Hardy for the United States Championship. Of course. Uh, Randy Orton uh, was won the title at Fastlane, lost it to Jinder Mahal at WrestleMania, and then Jeff Hardy won it off Jinder on Raw. So this is Randy Orton's uh, rematch to become the, the rematch for the United States title. Um, nothing again. It was not. It was really a nothing match. Like there, there wasn't really much to say about it. Uh, it was just. It just went out there. They put on a, like an average TV match and. Uh, it felt like there was more to come, and then all of a sudden Jeff Hardy just beat him. Um, you know, with just beat him with the Swan Time. Like these two would have better matches going forward after this, but you know, later in the year. But uh, on this night, wasn't really feeling it. Uh, just didn't feel it. Just felt like an average TV match, and Jeff Hardy retained the United States title as we move on. And we move on to the next match, which was Daniel Bryan versus Big Cass. Uh, this was just disappointing. Uh, a very disappointing matchup. Um, you know, I was, I, I didn't know what to expect of this match. Um, it, it was Daniel Bryan's first major pay-per-view singles match since he returned from his retirement. And it was against Big Cass, and it was a big opportunity for Big Cass to prove himself against Daniel Bryan. But he didn't really prove anything. Like he got over, you know, he was being the you know the typical giant that was overconfident, and Daniel Bryan basically submitted him in like seven minutes. Uh, submitted him in seven minutes, and then the match kind of felt pointless anyway because after the match, Big Cass just attacked him and laid him out after the match. So this rivalry must continue, and it didn't really make me want to see a rematch. But uh, yeah, anyway, Big Cass. You know, laid Daniel Bryan out after tapping out very easy. So, Daniel Bryan basically made Big Cass his bitch on this night, but then Big Cass just beat him up afterwards. So, nothing to it. As we move on to the next match, uh, we have the we have the SmackDown Women's Title on the line. We had Charlotte Flair trying to get back the SmackDown Women's Title uh, from Miss Money in the Bank from Miss Money in the Bank uh, cash in from Carmella, who was the SmackDown Women's Champion. So, Carmella versus Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's title. Again, a pretty nothing match. Uh, I didn't really care too much about this match. Uh, the way that they played it was that Carmella was out of her death, death when it came to fighting Charlotte. And Charlotte was the more superior athlete. And yet, Carmella like, dominated a, a lot of the portion of this matchup but, but by fluking her way into moves. Um, yeah, you know, like Charlotte would make him like Charlotte would make a mistake and then Carmella would capitalize on it. So and then the finish of the match was kind of ridiculous where Charlotte went for a moot salt, uh 
landed, you know, set, claimed to land funny on her, uh, her ankle, started holding her leg, and then Carmella kicked her in the back of the leg and then pinned her like she had kicked her in the face or something. So, um, yeah, pretty dull, a dull match, really. I didn't really care too much about it, and it didn't really make a, a lick of sense when it came to booking wise. Like, you know, it, the the boots cut the what they wanted Carmella to be this this champion who, you know, couldn't really wrestle. Like that's that that's what I got from it anyway. And she, you know, she just beat one of the best wrestlers, the most dominant wrestlers of all time, Charlotte Flair, via roll up. And it was kinda of like, what? Like what the fuck? Didn't really understand it. It was bit pretty ridiculous. Didn't really do much for me. Anyway, we move on to the next match. We have Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles in a no disqualification match for the WWE Championship. This is their third match in just over a month. They had one at WrestleMania. They had one at the Grace Royal Rumble, which ended in a D-ear, a double count out. And then, of course, we had this match, a no disqualification match for the WWE Championship. And um, it was going along just fine. Uh, it was becoming a really solid match. Uh, it was probably it was along it was going smoothly, very very smoothly. And it was it was going to become my it was I was going to say it was going to be my uh, second match of the night behind Seth Rollins and Miz. But then the finish happened and kind of just took the wind out of my sail. Um, so basically, what happened was uh, Nakamura in the build to this match would low blow AJ a lot. So he low blowed AJ in this match. So then AJ low blowed him back, kick you know, lo, you know, give him a low blow. And then they both they both kicked each other in the nuts like two seconds later. And it was a pretty cool spot of like both of them kicking each other in the nuts. But unfortunately both men couldn't couldn't get up for the count of ten. So the referee counted them both out in a no disqualification match, and it kind of went. It kind of made me go, really, like a no disqualification match, and it ends in a double count out again. But both because both men can't, it, it, you know, can't answer the referee's count of ten, and it, knowing exactly where this is going with the next pay per view, Money in the Bank, where AJ takes on Nakamura in a last man standing match where the whole point of the match is you've got to keep your opponent down for the count of 10. It was a bit of a silly way to get there, in my opinion, but it was very unfortunate because I was really enjoying the match between AJ and Nakamura, but then this match, that, that ending just kind of ruined it for me. You know, took my wind, took the wind out of, uh, you know, took the, took the air out of the balloon, so to speak. Anyway, we move on to the next match. Uh, we have the co-main event, the co-main event, as Braun Strowman teams up with Bobby Lashley to take on Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Um, this match on paper sounded really cool. Like really, that like, could have been really fun stuff. But unfortunately, it was the match before the main event, and didn't really do much of anything. Like you know, Sami and Kevin were arguing. For absolutely no reason. Sammy wanted to run away, but Kevin Owens wanted to fight, even though they were both heels. Um, and then they ended up pinning the wrong guy. So Bobby Lashley tagged himself in uh, uh, um, just just off camera. So we just we just about saw it, but not really. They didn't really pay attention to it. Uh, the commentators pointed it out that Lashley made the tag. But Sammy was legal, went to run away. Kevin... Uh, you know, Kevin and Sammy were pushing each other back into the ring, and then Bobby Lashley ended up pinning Kevin with a vertical suplex, and it just came off as like a bit, you know, a bit lackluster, a little bit. And he was like, "What? Like, what was the point of that? Like, you know what I mean? Like," and then it didn't lead to anything anyway, because Sammy and Kevin just got beat up after the match by both men anyway. So, you know, it's, it's, it's the baby face. The baby face is stood tall, but. Didn't really prove anything at the end of the day. And then, of course, we have the main event. Uh, Roman Reigns versus Samoa Joe. Uh, no titles no tie on the line, just two guys having a match for no reason. Um, it was... Well, what can I say about this match? Like, at the start, it started out pretty well. Like, before the match, Samoa Joe attacked him and, like, put a vicious beatdown on him. 
and put him through the announce table, and he was like, oh my gosh, like, can Roman Reigns continue? Made Roman Reigns come across as the underdog, which is always a bit weird, considering he's supposed to be, like, you know, six foot three, 265-pound Roman Reigns. Like, he isn't, you know, he isn't like a Daniel Bryan. Like, you know, he isn't the underdog. Like, stop stop booking him like he's Daniel Bryan. You know what I mean? Uh, but, yeah, it came, across, like, and then, of course, like, Samoa Joe... That, you know, I described it when I was watching it as Samoa Joe at the start was like a big grizzly bear, you know, attacking its prey, like, rah, you know, coming, rah, 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 you know, attacking. That's a very disturbing sound I just made, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, it came, you know, he was beating him up like a big grizzly bear, like, trying to rip him apart and all that stuff. And then as soon as the match started, he just, he went from being a grizzly bear to... Rest holds, rest holds, arm bar, arm lock, rest hold, a rest hold, arm lock, rest hold, head lock, chin lock, like it, like it was like it felt like they were purposely bringing down the match to make the match boring so that people would cheer for Roman Reigns, and it didn't work because the fans just went boring. They started chanting CM Punk. They started chanting Rusev Day. They started chanting "Beat the traffic," which was a that was a that was a new one. Never heard that before. And then, of course, they had glimpses of being a good match, like you know, Samojo getting glimpses of you know the flying out, you know, doing this splash out the side. You know, the the sent on through the ropes was good, but apart from that, there was nothing really to it. And of course, the obvious result was Roman just beat him with a spear, and then the pay per view just ended. Uh, with Roman celebrating, so there's because there was nothing really on the line. So very disappointing uh, end to a paper, which a very disappointing pay per view. And uh, sorry, I need a sneeze. Uh, trying to trying to trying to keep it in. Uh, probably not a good idea. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So overall, very disappointing pay per view. Uh, don't recommend watching it. Well. Watch it if you have to to come up with your own conclusion. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying don't watch it or whatever, uh, because if you want to watch it, you know, be, go ahead, you know, knock yourself out. Uh, come, come up with your, your own conclusion. Uh, this is my just, just my personal opinion. Um, I didn't, I didn't enjoy this paper whatsoever. Like, I, I enjoyed the the Nakamura AJ match for the most part, except the finish. Uh, I enjoyed Seth and Miz. They had a really fun, uh, really fun match. Really fun opener. Probably you know, my match of the night, definitely. But the rest of it, just the rest of the card, just basically uh, stunk. You know, basically stunk, and it was very forgettable. Um, I'm definitely not gonna. You know, I'm definitely happy that this pay per view is in the rear view mirror. Uh, very disappointing. Very disappointing return to the classic pay per view reviews. Um. <laughs> Anyhow, that's going to be it, gal guys. Tell me what you think in the comments. Give me a thumbs up if I deserve it. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. I'm out.